Atomy is a company that you can trust and purchase from. I have told this story before. I started a platform business in 1999, and I launched it in 2000. Um, I started IamKorea.com, which stands for Internet Mart Korea. I am stands for you know, Internet Mart Korea. I started the platform business with Internet Mart Korea. To be honest, I was lacking something at the time. I couldn't find an investor that would invest in my business. If I'd met a big investor, I could have become the Alibaba of Korea. Then Atomy would never have existed, and we wouldn't have been able to meet. In hindsight, I'm glad that my first business didn't go so well. Yeah. You guys are clapping, not even thinking of my suffering. One must start a business model that is faster than the trend, because trends change. One must be a step ahead of the world's progress. And then the next trend will follow you. It's actually very easy to be successful. Truth be told, there are not many successful people. But if you know the laws of success, it is actually very easy. Those who make money make a lot of money. And those who can't make money just suffer all their lives. There are people who experience failure for their entire lives. That is because they are not leading the trend. In order to lead the trend, you must be a step ahead of the trend. In order to do that, you must know how the world will change. Scholars have said that the first industrial revolution led to the second one, and the second revolution to the third, and ultimately to the fourth industrial revolution. What then must you do to have a competitive edge? What must you do to have a competitive edge in the fourth industrial revolution? The fourth industrial revolution is also known as a hyper-connected society. You must be connected to other people. These days, everyone is making money by being connected. This smartphone that you have, people are making money with this phone, right? That is because this smartphone is connecting people and businesses. In our age, connectivity will make you money. That is why experts are saying that the society we live in is a hyper-connected society. So where are you all connected to? To your alumni club? Yeah? With, with a few of your friends? You need to first see if that group is going to make you any money. Will your connection to that group bring you money? Think about it. Whether the group that you are connected to makes you more money or if they make you spend more money. Yeah. Since all your connections lead to expenses, you don't really like those connections. When it's springtime, you get phone calls, right? Just... Just a lot of people are trying to call you. They want to invite you places. Your friends are calling you to come to their children's wedding. These kinds of phone calls don't make you any money. They actually make you spend money. You cannot be connected to only these kinds of groups. You must decide whether your connections are going to bring you money. Yes, everyone is in fact connected to the world. If you have a smartphone, you are essentially connected to the world. The problem is that you are at the end of the connection. That is why your smartphone is called a terminal. The smartphone you have in your hand is a terminal. Terminal means the end. It's not in the middle. If you want to make money, you cannot be at the end. If you are at the end, you can only spend money. You must be in the middle. So let me give you an example. How are your terminals all connected? This is a hub. Telecommunication companies like KT and SKT are hubs. And the hubs connect all the different terminals together. The busier the terminals become, the more money hubs are able to make. Am I right? We're approaching a world where money will be made only through these hubs. If you remain as a terminal, then you will be nothing. Many people say they are living in an information age. But if you remain as a terminal, the more you consume information, 
the more money you'll wind up spending. No matter how hard you work as a terminal, it's not going to profit you very much. That is why you must become a hub. Listen carefully. In the past, if you went out to the marketplace, there was a store that maybe sold rice, right? And then there was a store that sold clothes and another that sold shoes, and another that sold supplies. And there were many stores like this, all gathered together. In the past, this is what the model looked like. The hub for rice was this one store. This one store used to distribute to all the other stores. All these other stores are terminals for the supply of rice, correct? This is what it looked like. But for shoes, the shoe store was the hub for that product. So this store would sell shoes to all the other people. Am I right? So this rice store would act as a hub for rice. But for shoes, it would then act as a terminal. Yeah. In the past, the role of a hub and the terminal was all mixed together. And that's why the marketplace did not die for thousands of years. But in these modern times, a big hub came right in the middle of all this. And what is this? These are discount marts. What then happens to the rice store? It will go bankrupt. What about the clothes store? It also dies. The same for the shoe store and the food store. The supply store shares the same fate as well. The model changed so that only this big mart becomes a hub. This is a problem. Ultimately, this big hub will do pretty well. But there are two main problems. Two problems. The first problem is that money that is sucked in here doesn't ever cycle out. The people in this hub are already consuming enough. They don't consume more products because they have more money. They might have five cars just sitting at home. Do you think they're going to spend more just because they have more money? No, not at all. That is why the money that is concentrated here does not get spent. This is very bad for the overall economy. All the consumer's money gets sucked into this hub. But the rich people in the hub don't spend the money. Then the consumers at the terminals will not have an opportunity to make money. The second problem is that these people here will become poor. Later, when these people become poor, are they going to buy products from this hub here? No, they won't have enough money. Then this hub is going to die out as well. That is why the hub reaches the ceiling. Then its revenue will continue to go down. And that is why it's necessary to restore the old social order. It's not just discount stores where we see this. But the same is for portal sites. A huge platform business has showed up. Everything will be sucked into this hub right here, right? Only this hub is going to make money and the rest will die out. There is another problem within this platform business. Uh, what is that problem? It's very difficult for consumers to select the products that they need. Why? When a consumer searches online, there are hundreds of products. Is price the only thing you need to consider? You know that the cheapest is not always the best, right? You're not sure if you should pick the cheapest or the middle option. Some think, I'm just going to pick the most expensive one. If it's expensive, it must be good. Is this how you should purchase products? The biggest concern of people using such portals is the confusion. They get confused. There's too much choice. After you've made the purchase, what happens? Are you always satisfied with your decision? Are you 100% happy with the clothes that you buy? You don't even wear half of the clothes that you bought in stores. Am I right? 
What happens if you buy products from online? You don't use a lot of them. The same goes for household products. Many of the products you buy just go straight into the trash. Let's say you have a 50% success rate. That seems fair. You bought what you liked. In this case, if the failure rate is 50%, then the price of that product is actually double the price. That's the truth in reality, correct? This is a big problem within online businesses. Also, it can add a lot of stress. You have to think about what to buy all the time. These problems have to be solved next. Also, in the position of the supplier, though they say they directly meet the consumers, there's really not much profit made because there are so many other suppliers. But there is no option because there are no other sales channels. All the suppliers stand in line to go into this hub, but the actual profit is really not high at all. So this leads to low volume of production and that causes a rise in price. The price goes up. This causes fierce competition amongst the suppliers and it causes a lot of stress for the consumers as well. This is the problem of platform businesses. What happens if someone solves this problem? That will be the post-platform business model. The next business model that comes after platform businesses will be possible. That is why I founded Atomy. The recently launched Azamal also started with 5,000 products. There are over 10,000 products that are waiting to go up on the site. All the products that these traditional marts all used to carry will be up on Atomy's Azamal. All 100% of them. However, in this mall, the consumer doesn't have to stress out. The quality of the products is good and the price is affordable, but the most important thing is the return of PVs. You can do business with this. In Atomy, not only will these people here become rich, but through PVs, the company will pay back 35% of the sales. Then the normal person can become rich. Then the consumer can purchase Atomy's products again, which causes a healthy cycle. In this platform business model, all the money gets sucked in, which makes the consumers ultimately poor. And when the consumers have no more money, the business also collapses. And when this business fails, then consumers will have to move to this next model. Then, logically, that means that all of you must become hubs, correct? The Atomy company itself is a hub. And all of you have come here as terminals. You consume products, so that makes you a terminal, but it doesn't end there. You can create terminals under you, correct? Yeah, of course you can. You can create terminals under you. From the company's perspective, the company is the hub and you are a terminal. But from the position of other terminals, you are a hub. And these people here can create other terminals under them. And if these people under you also create terminals under them, then that makes you a hub that exists between Atomy as a supplier and a large pool of consumers. In addition, all these people here are loosely connected, so are they loyal or not? Will they go somewhere else if they can find other products that are cheaper and better? Yeah, they will, because they're not loyal. But what about in this model? If they come here, they can do this as a business. The consumers here, in fact, become a prosumer, someone who acts as a producer while being a consumer at the same time. Because they can start making money when they come here, they will not move back to the other platform. No. 
That is why this is called a magnetic board system. Magnetic board system. Once they come to our platform, they will become stuck. And when they come, they come because the products are good and affordable. They even receive commission if they introduce it to others. And that will make them stick to the platform. Then there will be no reason to go back. But more and more consumers will come to our platform. So we have to prepare in advance. The people who are busy working to make money here will come to our platform. It's inevitable. If you can be grounded before that happens, you will be successful. We currently live in a hyper-connected society. The new age where everyone is connected is approaching us. And all of you have come here today to join us in this business.